Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very interesting sum. We have 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so forth. This goes on forever and we're going to try to find the sum of these series. Now, this is first of all called Grandi's series because in 1703, the mathematician Mr. Grandi studied the sum and there was a study in Italy around the year 2000 that they asked 16 and 18 years old people and they asked them about what is your opinion, what do you think about this series or sum. So here's the responses. Interestingly, some people said, and that's the pretty much the majority, if you don't count the no answer, majority of the people said zero. Some people said can be either zero or one. Some people said it doesn't exist. Some people said one. So there was a mix, uh, mixture of different answers. So we're going to explore some of these and see what is going on here. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this from a sum perspective. So we have 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 dot dot dot. Notice that if you pair these up, you're going to get zeros all the time, right? So that's kind of like adding the zero, 0 plus 0 plus 0. And if you add infinitely many zeros, you get 0, right? Well, you, someone can think about what is 0 times infinity. Isn't that undefined? So is this undefined? Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at it a little differently. For example, if you have 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1, we can also, 1 can also take the first term and then negate everything else. In other words, we're going to open up a gigantic parentheses and put these terms inside, but we have to change the sign. So this term, the first one that I marked, is going to be a positive one, and this one right here is going to be a negative one or minus one and a plus one and a minus one. You get the idea, right? And then this is going to give us something else. Why? Because we just said, hey, this was zero, right? So one minus zero is supposed to be one. So how can a sum be one and zero at the same time, right? How can we get two different answers? So... We could also look at this a little differently, like how about we put all the positive terms together, the terms with a plus sign, and then separate the terms with a minus sign. But if you negate everything, it's going to be the same thing. So it's kind of like wh what happens if you add infinitely many ones? Don't you get infinity? So this should be infinity and this should be infinity, right? So then we get infinity minus infinity. But isn't that zero? Is it? Or is it undefined? So those are all the good questions. And these are some of the undefined cases uh, that comes up when we do limits, right? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some limits as well. But before, before that, let's go ahead and consider some of these answers. Why do you think the students thought the answer, why did they think that sometimes the answer could be 0 or 1 or 1 half? So those seem to be the common answers. And we already got 1 and 0. But how can one get 1 half from here? Is that possible? Let's give it a try. So we're going to go ahead and write this sum again. 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus dot dot dot. And we're going to call this S this time because S represents the sum, right? And then we're going to do what we did uh, to get 1. So we're going to negate everything except for the first term and put them all in parentheses. And now this is equal to the same sum because I haven't really changed, added, or subtracted anything. Now notice that the expression inside the parentheses is what? The same as S, the original sum, take a look. This one is the same as this one. So this kind of contains itself infinitely many times, right? But it's alternating. So then we get something like this. It's a linear equation. Come on, it's very easy to solve and you can do it. 1 minus S equals s, uh-oh, and then we can add s to both sides and 1 equals 2s, so s equals 1 half. So that's kind of like we agree to meet in the middle because some people say 0, some people say 1. Why don't we just agree on the average? Yes, averages are actually used. If you look at an infinite series, you can kind of look at all the partial sums, and if you average them 
and take the limit as n approaches infinity, then that kind of gives you an idea about the limit. But there is a but about it, and we, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, what, what is going on here? So, we're getting different sums. We got 0, 1, and 1 half. Is there another way we can get 1 half so our claim will be a little stronger? And the answer is somewhat yes. So, let's take a look at it from another perspective. Remember the infinite geometric series 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed dot 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 and this is equivalent to 1 over mi 1 minus r but we have a condition we have a stipulation what is that it is r must be between negative 1 and 1 obviously this works if r is 0 which is beautiful because if you replace r with 0 everything will cancel out except for 1 and on the right hand side we're going to get a really nice 1 okay so it works great so there's no, uh oh, I just wrote between negative 1 and 0, sorry about that. It's negative 1 and positive 1. Great. So this is the condition we do need. But wait a minute, we have an alternating sum. So can, can we change things around a little bit? Yes. You can replace r with negative r, right? And then you're going to get the following sum and see what happens to this. Well, it's supposed to be 1 over 1 minus negative r according to our formula, but negative r needs to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, we're going to go ahead and simplify this. Don't worry about it. It kind of looks messy, but we'll simplify it. Notice that if you raise negative r, by the way, this is supposed to be negative r too. If you raise negative r to an even power, it's going to turn into positive r squared. So it's going to be like this, 1 minus r plus r squared, simplifying from here, minus r cubed plus r to the fourth, so on and so forth. And of course, the right-hand side is also going to turn into 1 over 1 plus r. Nice. So far, so good, right? But what about the condition? What about the stipulation? Well, here, you can multiply everything by negative 1, but you have to reverse the inequality. So this means r is going to be like this and like that. But guess what? It's the same thing, right? It doesn't matter. So you can actually, you might as well just write it as follows. r must be between. So if negative 1 is between, sorry, if negative r is between negative 1 and 1, then r is also going to be on that interval. So if you go ahead and replace r with 1 here, ta-da, we get 1 minus r, 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus dot 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 equals 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. Yeah, the average wins. But the problem is there is no inequality or there's no equality, so r equals 1 cannot be used. So none of these answers will work because let's take a look. Now, first of all, let's write our limit with the, uh, I mean, the series or sum using the sigma notation. n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the power n. Obviously, there's more than one way to do it. This is an infinite series. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to check the limit of the nth term. Why? I'm not talking about the partial sum, just the nth term. What happens if you check the limit of the nth term? If the limit of the nth term is 0, we don't know what is going on. But if it's not 0, the series definitely diverges. Make sense? OK, so check the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 to the power n. Obviously, as n approaches negative infinity, I mean, as n approaches infinity, this is going to bounce around negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. So it's not going to be 0. We know for sure that this limit is never going to be 0. Uh-oh. That means this diverges, okay? And what I mean by this is actually our series given with the general term negative 1 to the power n. So there is no sum that we can find. Let's go ahead and take a look at some results from Wolfram Alpha. Yeah, Wolfram Alpha says the same thing. This diverges, okay? So we can't find a sum. It's not going to be possible. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.